from declaring that he's the custodian of Green Arrow to stating his conditions on returning as the character, here's how Green Arrow's Stephen Amell broke silence on James Gunn's recasting. The actor addressed the possibility of returning as Star City's Defender on a Whatnot stream where he called himself the custodian of the character. He thinks that he's an authority on the hero, just like Grant Gustin is an authority on The Flash. Talking about James Gunn and the DC movie franchise, Amel seemed a little frustrated about the lack of clarity on Green Arrow's future, and he's trying to figure out if they think that they're better than television. But as far as he can tell, the movies are doing their own thing, and they were letting the TV side do their own thing this whole time. Despite that, he thinks that they need him more than he needs them. While he gave them credit for being really smart people who'd put a lot of thought into casting Green Arrow, he's also convinced that any choice other than himself would be an unsure thing. Has he earned the right to be confident about being the best Green Arrow? Sure he has. The world of superhero movies was different in 2012. Back then, the Marvel Cinematic Universe was just a bunch of Easter eggs across the movies, and it was in that very year that Marvel Studios showed the world the true potential of the MCU with the Avengers. It was going to be tough for DC to come up with something on that level, but they managed to pull it off with the premiere of Arrow. Even before the Arrowverse was a thing, Arrow was seen as a really strong TV show, and certainly one of the best things that the CW had ever aired. It was anchored by a brilliant performance from Stephen Amell as Oliver Queen, whose storyline of trying to adjust at home after years trapped on an island was super compelling. Some would say that Arrow really hit its stride in the second season, as all the actors were all comfortable with their parts, and the series introduced Manu Bennett as Deathstroke, who was just the best villain ever. The success of the show paved the way for more DC shows on the CW, and the last one, The Flash, lasted all the way till 2023, 11 years after Arrow premiered. So yeah, I don't think anyone can deny that Amel is the custodian of the character, but here's the million dollar question. What does James Gunn think about Green Arrow? Well, back in December 2022, the director and head of DC Studios revealed that Green Arrow was one of his favorite heroes, and he used to dress up as Oliver Queen all the time. Over in the DC Extended Universe, the characters of Peacemaker made a reference to the hero, which pretty much implied that he existed in that universe. Peacemaker was, of course, written by Gunn, so that's a strong sign that Green Arrow might be coming to the DC Universe. He might not be alone either, as there's a Black Canary movie in production, based on the version of the character we saw in Birds of Prey, played by Journey Smollett, that movie was never officially cancelled, even while the new C-suite at Disney was going wild with cancelling projects, so it might end up being pulled into the DCU. None of this stuff is concrete of course, and the truth is that there's no Green Arrow movie on the horizon. Amel can't be cast in a movie that doesn't exist yet, and Gunn's confirmed his first slate of DC projects with no Green Arrow in sight. I don't even see where you could fit in a cameo in these movies, as this chapter is called Gods and Monsters, and apart from the Superman and Batman movies, that's the theme these projects are based on. It might be a while before we get to see a Green Arrow movie, and when we do, there's a good chance that they'll go with someone other than Amel. The big reason I think this is because of The Flash, a movie that basically pretends that the Arrowverse doesn't exist. Not only did they not cast Grant Gustin as Barry Allen or Melissa Benoist as Kara Zor-El, the movie famously features a bunch of cameos from iconic DC heroes, and they skip the chance to feature Grant or other Arrowverse characters. They could have returned the favor to the Arrowverse, which did feature Ezra Miller in a quick cameo during the Crisis on Infinite Earths event. The message seems pretty clear to me, and it's pretty much what Amel said in his live stream. The movies are a separate thing from the shows. While they might technically exist in the same multiverse, the DCU movies are going to distance themselves from the Arrowverse, especially since the small screen home of the DCU will be the Max streaming service. Why would Gunn do this? I suppose it could be because the Arrowverse lost most of its goodwill towards the end. Though Arrow was a well-liked show by the time it was over, fans had turned on The Flash and pretty much everything else, and Gunn wants nothing to do with movies and shows that were badly received. That doesn't mean we'll never, ever see Steven as Oliver, though, as the end of his show hasn't stopped him from picking up his bow. Although Ollie was turned into the Spectre in the end of his show, he returned to the Arrowverse during the ninth and final season of The Flash. 
In the episode, it's my party, and I'll die if I want to. The villain Bloodwork brainwashes Wally West, trying to get him to use the Speed Force to travel across the multiverse and spread his corrupted blood cells. As the Spectre, Ollie works as a defender of the multiverse. This was definitely something that needed his attention. Together with his old friends Barry and John Diggle, the two of them stopped Bloodwork, and his character got extra closure. Amel's willingness to suit up as Ollie one more time, along with his statements on that livestream proves one thing. He really does care about Oliver Queen. Playing the Green Arrow all those years was more than just a gig for the actor, he's truly passionate about it, and the years haven't killed his passion. He honestly seems pretty pissed that Gunn wouldn't consider him for the role. And while there are understandable reasons for James's decisions, I can also empathize with Amel's irritation. It must sting him to think that someone else is going to swoop in and do his character, but there's nothing that can be done. The Flash ended in 2023, and the world has moved on from the Arrowverse. Or has it? Say what you will about the Arrowverse, it had its fans, and while the CW has bid this franchise adieu, we might get to see it again someday. An obvious way that could happen is through Superman and Lois, the one CW show that hasn't been cancelled. Sure, it's been confirmed to take place in a different universe, but thanks to the idea of the multiverse, Superman and Lois is the best shot we have of seeing these beloved characters again. Another way for them to bring back the Arrowverse would be through an Elseworlds movie. Elseworlds is DC Studios' branding for movies that feature DC characters but are completely outside the DCU, with the Batman Part 2 and Joker Falaya Do being the first pair of Elseworlds movies. The creation of this branding makes me think that they'll be doing lots more Elseworlds projects, and that could include an Arrowverse movie or limited series. Heck, if they put it on Max, that'd actually let them do things with the Arrowverse that weren't possible with CW budgets and standards. I'd say that seeing the Arrowverse on the big screen is a long shot, but hey, crazier things have happened. All of that depends on Emil being ready to play this role again, and I have good news for you there, because he made it clear that he isn't done with this character yet. Though he doesn't think he'll be suiting up as the Emerald Archer anytime soon, he's sure that he hasn't made his last appearance as the character either. There are limits on what Emil is willing to commit to, though, and the big one is that he isn't interested in doing a network TV-style show anymore. When Arrow was on the CW, Emil would have to star in 22 or 23 episodes every year, and that's a massive commitment. He kept that up for eight seasons of Arrow, while also doing guest appearances in other shows, so this one role basically ate up his entire career for nearly a decade. He's willing to consider anything that's more limited than that, which includes movies. It looks like Amel is offering DC Studios an olive branch. Let's see if they take it. From keeping himself open to a shorter role as the Green Arrow, to bragging about being the custodian of the character. That was how Green Arrow's Stephen Amel broke silence on James Gunn's recasting.